Hey, what's up guys, Benzo Figures here. And today I will be showing you how a simple painting technique can really bring out the amazing sculpt on this figure with just a little bit of paint and patience. With that being said, let's begin. Today I will be showing a step-by-step -step tutorial on how I painted this, but the twist is, this is the first time I've painted this Heihachi, so I'll be sharing some tips and tricks on how I painted this and what I learned along the way. So let's take a close look on this beefed up Dr. Wily figure. Much like the Kazuya figure, this is a pretty good figure and has a lot going for it. The only downside is that for the price point, there isn't really any paint on it, but the sculpt is all there. So step one is to disassemble this figure. I was thinking about heating up this figure, but I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing, but the joints all pop off without heating it. Probably a bad thing, but for customizing, this is super convenient. I was initially worried about taking off the belt piece. The belt is a hard plastic, but the gi is soft. So if I use a little bit of force, it most likely would snap off. But after a bit of finagling, I realized the easiest way to remove the belt piece was through the bottom part of the torso, but only after you remove the diaper piece. So slide off the gi and there you go. Now we have fully disassembled the figure. Step two is giving the figure a wash. I'm going to be using this mahogany brown paint from Vallejo to make my own skin tone wash. So what I'm going to be doing is that I'm going to just add a drop of this paint, then dilute it with like 7 to 10 drops of water just to make it pretty runny. I know you could probably buy a wash and save some time to not make one, but I'm pretty cheap so there's that. So after I make my wash, I want to apply it just over the skin tone of the figure and really try to get into the crevices. After waiting a minute, I wipe the excess off just so that way he stays in the crevice, but doesn't stain the skin tone itself. I try to wipe the figure down perpendicularly so that way I don't accidentally wipe away inside the creases and undo my progress. If, or should I say, whenever I do accidentally wait too long for the wash to dry and stain it, I just take the napkin and just kind of scratch it off. It really is a pretty simple fix to be honest, since the paint has not fully cured. It takes hours for paint to cure, so every mistake is really redeemable. So just talking over the footage, I use this mahogany brown just for the skin tone and later I'll show you what I use for the clothing. But for now, yeah, just repeat this process to all parts of the skin tones, painting the hands, arms, torso, feet, head with this. In this sped up video, there are many times where I applied the wash to the skin tones multiple times. This is because when I repainted my Kazuya figure, I kind of went overboard and it looked really messy. So this time around, I really want to just highlight his muscle tones, but more subtly and not make it look as messy as my Kazuya figure. So yeah, that's why you'll see me mess up a bunch, but I wanted to keep the process all in here to show that even if you mess up, it's all good. But yeah, whenever I wanted the shadows to pop out more, I just add more wash on top of the dry wash to bring out the details more. Even though it's already looking a lot better, it'll really be apparent after we apply the matte sealant onto the skin tone. I'll show that later on though. But for now, after applying the wash onto the skin tone multiple times, I'm pretty happy on how it's turning out, so onto the clothing. So similar to the wash I made for the skin, to make a dark wash, I put a drop of black paint, then dilute it with several drops of water, probably between 7 to 10 drops of water per drop of paint. For Heihachi's gi and pants, I wanted to make his gi just a tad bit darker. I didn't want to paint it in German gray or black since his gi is more like a dark gray, but it's really worn and tattered. So applying a dark wash over the gi can achieve this look more effectively. Because we are working with just darkening the cloth, this process should be a lot faster than applying a wash to the skin. Mostly because since his gi is pretty tattered, it doesn't really have to be evened out. Actually, the more uneven the shading is, the more tattered it looks. So it really all works out for the better. For the pattern on the back, I do try to be really careful with this since the pattern is really nice and I only really want to darken the gi. Adding another coat of dark wash over the clothes since I wasn't satisfied with the look just yet. But after a second coat of dark wash, it should be good to go. 
Now that I'm finally set on the shading, it's time to seal the wash. Be sure to wait a full 24 hours to let the wash dry and the paint to cure. Okay, so I never record the sealant process because I don't want to accidentally get it on my phone lenses and mess that up. Currently, I'm trying out this Krylon Matte Sealant Spray since it's pretty cheap and it comes with a lot. When you do spray sealant, make sure you're outside or in a well-ventilated room or something. Wear protective gear like a paint respirator since this is pretty strong in fumes and stuff. But yeah, for coating, I spray it once waited like 20 minutes then sprayed it again for a second coat so after i sealed the paint i waited another 24 hours to make sure that the sealant was now fully cured this next part i probably should have edited out but i did want to include my mistakes as a learning tool so i probably should have known this but sealant on soft rubber goods does not work common sense i know but i wasn't really thinking i probably inhaled too many sealant over the years don't do that to you but yeah, moving the ghee with the sealant being sprayed onto it was a terrible idea. Lesson learned. Still, I've come this far, I might as well assemble the rest of the figure. Luckily, like I said in the beginning of the video, these joints pop right off and right back on super easily. Like, I'm still pretty shocked that I don't have to do the boil and pop technique to reassemble and disassemble it. But yeah, when you see right here, there's a huge difference between the painted and unpainted part of the figure. And the painted parts does look a lot better. Derp, I forgot the belt, so let's just place it right back. Maybe it was a good thing I messed up the gi. I can smush the gi and put the belt right back on without the paint rubbing off. Afterwards, I added the paint onto the gi again, and yeah. Here are the final results and the before and after. My camera didn't do a good job capturing the details on the gi, so here's another side-by-side -side comparison footage. I do hope this tutorial helps out a lot and drop a like, comment, and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.